Well, my main memory was the absolute shock of it happening at all. I remember we were working in the village, uh, we're on the lo location of the village, and we were in the, I think we were in the church in the village, and I was doing a scene with Liz Estenson, and there was a lovely director we had at the time called Ollie Horsborough, uh, and we'd, we'd, we'd more or less done the scene, and I noticed that there were a few people watching that I, I, uh, weren't, weren't normally around. I think, well, that's unusual, but maybe they just want to come and have a look and see what we're doing in the village, and this, this and the other. And then Ollie said, I think we'll go for another take. And I was thinking, well, we've got it. I'm sure we've got it. We don't need another take on this. And so we did. Anyway, we patiently went through another take. And um, as I'm talking to Liz, I noticed this, this, uh, this microphone coming in. I thought, that's got to be in shot, surely. And then I looked along the arm of the person holding the microphone, and there's Michael Aspel with a red book. I was thinking, my goodness, they must be doing this Estenson. And then I saw my name on it, I thought, no, it's me. And I was, I, I was absolutely bowled over, absolutely bowled over. To the, to the point I was in, actually in a state of shock. And I, I didn't know what to do next. The, one of the producers came up to me of, of This Is Your Life and said, uh, what do you want to do now? And I said, I've absolutely no idea. And she said, do you want me to make some decisions for you? And I said, yes, I'm incapable of making any decisions myself. She said, right, what we're going to do is we're going to leave your car here. We're going to take you to the studio. We're going to put you in a, in a room in, in the uh, studio, in a dressing room. And uh, everything's laid out for you. And we'll take you from there. And uh, from then on, I thought, well, I'm in somebody else's hands. Let's just go with the flow. And I thought I could ruin this for myself by just getting nervous. Or I could decide I'm going to enjoy it. And I thought, let's just enjoy it. Well, so I was thinking, well, I wonder who's going to be here. Um, you know, uh, the, the, uh, I was trying to imagine the sort of people that might turn up or, or might not be able to turn up, you know. Um, and so I, I, was, I was sort of setting myself up for the surprises that were to come. In a way, because I'm an actor, I was trying to rehearse what was going to happen. And I thought, after a while, I thought, well, I can't do that. I've no idea who's going to turn up, so I'm just going to have to go with the flow, as I said before. Uh, and... Uh, I was just looking forward to it after that. But the thing that surprised me was I was thought, well, I haven't done enough to merit this. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but uh, if they decided that I was to be the subject, it's their decision, not mine. I can remember uh, being really touched and surprised by the number of people who, who came. Uh, people I hadn't seen for years, particularly people I trained with at uh, my theatre school, East 15, because I was so close to those people at the time. They were absolutely my best friends. Yet, you know, you lose contact when, when you, you leave uh, an institution like that. And the people in the band I used to play in, in Newcastle, uh, the, they came on. But uh, there was one thing in particular, is that my, one of my greatest friends at East 15 was an American chap who which was just fascinated me because he was so different to me. He'd been in the army, and goodness knows what, American army, of course. Uh, he was a lieutenant, as they say there. And he, a guy, uh, he guarded Hess in Spandau, it was one of his duties. So he was absolutely fascinating. And the, anyway, they had a recording of him in, uh, on a beach in Santa Monica, I think, because he's now working as a writer over in America. And I thought, well, that's great, they've managed to find Grant. And, and then they said, and here's the biggest surprise of the night, Grant Walpole's here, and Grant walked in. Cause, and, and I thought, my goodness, he's here, he's here. So the team's back together, the, you know, the East 15 team's back together. It was great. It's, it's lovely, you know, that uh, Sue Johnson, for instance, uh, did a video recording, and my friend Neil did a video recording, things like that, I expected that. Of course, my brother Dave had to do that as well, because he was on tour, he was a sound engineer, he was on tour in the States. But um, there was a core group of people that were there that I was delighted to see. Paula Tilbrook, I think I was a guest on her show. Uh, and now she was a guest on mine, so there was a reciprocal thing taking place there. But uh, Paula was, it, it, there's no two ways about it, she was the grand dame of Emmerdale, so it was absolutely fitting that she should be the last person to come on, I think. After that, we had the best party, because, um, and I remember saying to a friend of mine uh, there, uh, it was Andy Greenhalgh, they were saying, actually what this is, is a celebration of friendship uh, more than anything else. Uh, and I just happens to be the subject that this celebration is happening around at the moment. But it's for all of us. It's for all of us, you know. It was a hell of a party. I remember being very grand at one point, and then and, and some coming up and saying, John, John, the cars are here to take us back to the hotel. And I said, OK, yeah, but the cars are not taxis. They'll go when we're ready to go, and I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't actually thinking of it as a sort of biography, and, and I don't think that's the function of it at all. It's a collection of anecdotes, um, some of them amusing, hopefully all of them entertaining.
you know, some memories, some of which were embarrassing, you know. I, I don't think it, it, it in any way sort of raised my profile because as, as you, if you're in a, a soap like Emmerdale, which is watched by six million people six times a week, your profile's pretty high anyway. Uh, but it was a nice Philip, it really was. Oh, I was a, a, immensely f flattered, but as I said, somewhat puzzled that I'd, I'd merited the, the, this um, strange accolade, if you like, because uh, it is an accolade, you know, the, this is your life as an iconic thing. Um, uh, it's, uh, it, it's almost become a metaphor for uh, other things that happen in other people's lives, you know, to, people talk about the big red book of their own lives and things like that. Well, I've actually got a big, the big red book, and I've got the tapes to prove it as well. So, you know, it's an, a hell of an honour. Uh, and also, I was one of the last of the subjects because uh, uh, I pulled the ladder up after me after that. <laughs> and with the present company I, I'm working with, I, 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 I anecdotally just said to her, yeah, well, once I was the subject of This Is Your Life, and they went, you weren't. You weren't. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's quite an impressive thing to have happened, really. Uh, and, uh, and I look back at it and think, my goodness, that really happened, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, to sum it up, I mean, one, it was an honour, uh, it, it really was. I mean, people talk about the word honour around uh, rather too uh, freely, I think, but it was an extraordinary honour to be given that. But, uh, as I say, the main thing I, I took away from it was um, what a lovely bunch of people I know and the family I know and how kind it was for them all to give up their time to come and do this. And um, they seemed to do it willingly and enjoyably, and so it, it became a, a great celebration of uh, my ties to the family, to friends, and so friends and friend, friendship generally. It was a, it was a, it was a great celebration.